Good morning and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be discussing Section 8 housing and the many types of housing programs out there. Now, before I get started, I'll let you know I'm recording in a new area, so the sound and lighting may be off. We'll just have to live with it for now. So, going back to housing, most of you guys only think there are several types. There's actually, in fact, there's dozens out there. I'm going to attempt to speak about 22 different types if we can manage to get through that in eight minutes. And this should give you a menu of options. Now, most of you recognize the word Section 8, especially those that are older, uh, because that's a program that's been running for decades. And so it's really not called that anymore. You know, when you go to, when you're dealing with HUD, you're actually going to the Housing Authority, and the Housing Authority offers you housing choice vouchers. Now, there are a, a, host, a whole host of other programs going on in there. So if you don't know your rights or what you can get, you shouldn't expect these people really to, to offer it to you because they're probably wanting to do the least amount possible to get you housed so they're not going to bring out a menu like a restaurant and just tell you hey here's all the fabulous op uh, options you have so i'm going to inform you guys what to do and uh, maybe you'll get them to actually earn their paycheck this week so first up it's going to be the housing choice voucher as you all know uh, if you qualify for that program then essentially they give you a digital version of a housing choice a voucher and you go out and find a place, whether it be a private landlord or if it be a corporate uh, apartment complex, wherever you want, whatever it may be, it's your option, okay? So they don't just go and give you a list of properties uh, that landlords are ready to accept you. You have to go find this housing. It's often you're only given 60 to 90 days, depending on the city. And it's a difficult, it can be difficult to, to get it. In addition to that, uh, the housing choice voucher, depending on the city, can be anywhere from eight months uh, waiting list up to 15 years. Um, that's why I tell people, you know, as a consultant, I've been doing it 15 years, six years on YouTube. I've got a, a success rate of around 97%. I'm really, really good at what I do. So I'd encourage you to watch the consulting video that um, I was suggesting because I send people through housing authorities like a streak of lightning, okay? There are those that wait decades and there's my clients. Now, moving on from that, let's talk about project-based housing. Now, a lot of you have that idea of what you see in the newspaper and on TV, and you have been seeing since you were a kid, that uh, it's the ghetto, it's a trailer park, it's this or it's that. Look, project-based housing is simply this. It is um, a designation they give to a building that deals strictly with the voucher being attached to the unit. So unlike the housing choice voucher, um, the funding, um, that the rent checks are specifically tied to unit A1 or A, uh, A2 or A3. So you cannot port to any different areas, counties, or states, or cities. You're literally, when you receive the funding for that specific apartment, you're stuck in that, okay? Until I can convert you out of that back over to HCV. Number two, uh, I, let me be honest with people, and I know this is going to hurt some feelings. Project-based housing is often what they try to push people. The, the housing authorities will often push low-functioning people into um, project housing, okay? These are the people you might consider to be criminals, uh, gang members, drug addicts, um, prostitutes, and just about all the other problematic people. I'm not suggesting the elderly and homeless go there, but I suspect strongly, uh, based on racism and prejudice and other issues in our society, that a lot of people that um, end up in project housing, they like to pull the, uh, some of the more tenuous people there and while they give ACB vouchers to people that function high on a higher level. So that's just strictly my opinion, but I think after 15 years, I know what I'm talking about. Okay, so beyond uh, project-based housing, which I really don't recommend for anybody, um, there is Section 811. Look, the word Section 811 is actually just a funding, okay? It doesn't, it's not a physical entity. It's not a physical voucher. So you guys run into the housing authority, give me the 811. Well, the, you know, they're going to look at you like you're crazy, okay? 811 is a designation. So if you go in there and you have the right criteria, disabilities, maybe combined with age or military service, then it might be applicable to pull funding from the 811 program in order to give you an HCB voucher that pays slightly more than the average person, okay? So quit going into the housing authority, give me 811. The second is going to be Section 202. And I want to tell you, you know, I know there's a lot of seniors on my channel, and regrettably, after 150 videos, I have never made a video specifically about seniors. And I'm going to address that in the very next video because you guys have a lot of options. So let's start with Section 202 housing. That is supportive housing for the elderly. It's often 100% pay. You uh, either includes utility uh, property that's all inclusive of utility, 
or um, they'll pay for it. So I don't want to go too deep on that today, but I just want to let you know that if you are 55 and older or 62 and older, you have some great options out there and you will not be housed in a ghetto. All right. Just to be clear, if you consult with me, I can assure it won't happen. I know how to navigate their system to ensure that you would never land in a situation like that. Next up is going to be Section 3. This is housing plus uh, employment opportunities. These are often the most critically endangered neighborhoods where they have the most problems. So they often combine the ability for you to not only receive housing in a low, very low-income uh, neighborhood, they also give you an opportunity to work, which means there are jobs available. So you're able to, uh, to benefit from both the housing and also receiving a, a job. Now, that, I should tell you, is um, very limited in only certain areas in certain cities, okay? Continuum of care. Boy, we've really talked about that a lot uh, over the past couple of years, and uh, it is a hidden program. They don't like to market it or advertise it simply because they don't want the bulls rush from uh, HUD housing. So they don't want 30,000 people in a waiting list rushing over to COC to get that housing. It was originally designed for homeless people, possibly people getting out of prison, stuff like that. But uh, let me tell you something about uh, COC housing. It includes a few programs, Rapid Rehousing and PSH, PSHC. And so it's, it's a good program. I've used to get a lot of clients as a stepping stone while they wait for the, for the really long HUD uh, waiting list, okay? And so this, you know, COC housing happens usually within 30 to 35 days. If you live in Florida, LA, those times can reach anywhere. It can reach up to 90 days or longer, all right? And with the pandemic uh, convoluting everything, it could actually go a little bit longer. But most of my clients that I've dealt with get it under 30 days. Um, now, I should tell you the COC housing is also known as a continuum of care, coordinated entry, the ESG, the Bose system, and let me tell you, every state likes to give it a new name, so I'm constantly having to keep up with uh, all the new versions of it, okay? Now we're going to move on. Uh, I think we already covered project-based housing, so we got a duplicate. Now I'm going to talk about PSH. That's permanent supportive housing. Permanent supportive housing is 100% pay. It's for low-functioning people. Um... You, you go through a process, and if you have the qualifying issues, which I know what those specifically are, um, you're able to get housing where they pay 100% of the rent and utilities, and it's a pretty good deal. As long as you don't violate the lease, break the law, or abandon the unit, it's pretty much yours for life. Now, I should tell you that it's a rare unicorn to get that, all right? Again, uh, you know, when they are, it's not bragging rights, but I definitely get my clients that. If it's on the market, if it's available, and there's 100 applicants, and only, you know, 100 people apply, I can assure you that if you went through me, you'll get the rare unicorn, okay? Now, next up, we're going to talk about the Shelter Plus uh, Care Program. Now, this is an idiot's program. I, I'm just going to be honest, all right? So, here we are. You, you, <laughs> you're talking about places like L.A., New York. They love to do this thing. Um, so, let's slam somebody with disabilities in the shelter, and let's give them a, a counselor that makes $3 an hour that got her bachelor's degree out of a bubblegum machine. That's what that bullshit is, and I'm just going to be up front. I don't, the clients that I consult with, I don't send them to that garbage, okay? Anytime you get involved with a shelter that's a nonprofit that's profiting, and then they profit from the mere fact of keeping you in a bunk bed al along with everybody else that's mangy ass, then no, I don't, uh, you're welcome to try that, but I won't be discussing it, but it's garbage. Uh, B E A W A. This is for people that experience domestic issues, and I'm not going to use the other word because YouTube will uh, make my video not be viewed as much if I use that magic B word. So let's just say that women that have issues at home uh, from being, um, you know, from having fighting and, and different issues. Okay, so this is not a specific type of housing. Again, this is a funding level, and it's a law that. A, so what happens is when you discuss those particular issues revolving around domestic problems in the home, what would happen is they designate certain funds to allow you to get a housing choice voucher and a host of other programs into housing quicker. It's what it does, all right? So it's not, you can't go in, hey, give me some BAWA housing. It doesn't exist that way. It's just a funding level. Next up is going to be HOPWA, okay? Housing Opportunity with Persons with AIDS or HIV. Look, this has been a program around from since the 80s. If you have either or and you have the applicable requirements, then um, there's good funding for this, okay? And not enough people know about it. it you know, it, it comes back to the whole issue. 
a lot of these programs, they're not known, and uh, it's just come down to laziness on the part of social workers and counselors and uh, the housing authority. Now, just to clarify, I realize that social workers and counselors are not lazy. I often think that uh, a lot of them are unaware. I do speak to a lot of counsel around the country. They're some of the greatest people I know. I consult with a lot of them as well. So let me, let me take that back. They're not lazy. But if you're a counselor in a shelter, I've got to tell you, you know, those type of counselors are usually the most treacherous people I've ever met. Okay, moving on. HUD bash. Now, that's for you veterans. There's no reason for a veteran to be on the street in 2021, okay? The federal government backs you 120%, which means you're mo the most highly sought tenant out there. There's absolutely zero reason to be on the street. They have separate employees inside of the housing authority to help you. Uh, they also have separate employees through COC. And uh, I can send you reeling through the system uh, like lightning, um, just like with domestic issues, uh, to get housing very quickly. So there's just simply no reason for you to be struggling. Uh, you're backed by the full force of the federal government, and you have exceptional, you have exceptions, okay, that allow you to move to the head, the head of the line, okay? Next up, we're going to go back to seniors again. We have ALCP, Assisted Living Conversation Program for our Seniors. We have PACE Program, which is all-inclusive of elderly seniors. The Ross Program, which is a residential opportunities and self-sufficiency for seniors. We have Section 184, Tribal Housing and the Ability to Gain a Loan. Section 106, Housing, and, and that would be when you deal with a historic house. Section 32, Housing, HUD Home and Ownership uh, Rules. Section 515, rule rent, uh, rule renting, rule rent, <laughs> rental housing. Section 3, housing, op uh, housing and employment opportunities. And to be frank with you, I would love to get my hands on the master list of all these sections because it goes back 100 years. You're talking about laws, uh, tax laws. The, these are all sex subsections of the law. So eventually I'm going to get my hands on every subsection and I'll be able to tell you that every every program that exists. So, you know, I realize this is not going to be an extraordinary help, okay? But it helps you identify programs that may be available. If you don't know how to research these things on your own, man, just hire a consultant. Look, <laughs> I put over a thousand people in the housing in the past year. Um, so there's really, there's really no reason for people to be on the street. Now, I realize that times are more difficult with the pandemic, so it may take longer. But, uh, you know, and another thing I'm going to do, like I said, I'm going to address the issue for seniors in the next video. So, folks, I hope you kind of enjoyed this. I hope it opened your eyes a little bit. And if you have questions, always comment. If not, contact me on my emails in the comment section if you need a consultant. Information about that as well is in the comment section. Uh, you guys have a good morning. Thank you. Bye.